just end. if we can tomorrow night if not it's okay and we'll run whatever we run because I know you'll be getting off the bus oh oh yeah because of the eclipse
Good morning, Orville Baptist Church. Well, I guess it's evening now, isn't it? I'm so used to doing it in the morning. I did just wake up from a nap a couple hours ago, so. <laughs> well, we'd like to welcome you to this evening's revival service. Ask that you would stand with us as uh, we open the service singing, I will celebrate. We have a lot to celebrate today, don't we? It's good to see people at the altar this morning. That was great. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's good to be in God's house with you today. Today, and uh, we've had a great time. Uh, Trey and Whitney and uh, their mom uh, were over at the house along with Pastor Jack and his wife Kim. And we just had a great time. We broke bread together with a lot of people over at the Mexican restaurant. So I think we broke a record of having 17 one time from our church. I think we had 20 something there this time. So uh, <clears throat> we love Mexican food. All right. But uh, it has been so good today. Uh, thank you from my heart for coming. Uh, it was good to laugh in my house again. And uh, I needed that. So I wouldn't want to do that. So sorry. But uh, it is so good to be with you tonight. And uh, I know Pastor Jack has got a word from God for you. And uh, Trey and Whitney are going to sing. And that's going to be glorious. And so uh, will you join me as we begin with a, uh, a word of prayer. Father, we, uh, we began this morning by saying that all praise and all glory would go to you. And Lord, we don't want to fail in being truthful for that. We thank you for what you've done this morning, bringing salvation to the house of God here at this place, bringing a rededication to a walk with you closer and a desire to join this church. Father, thank you for the, the uh, known decisions today and maybe there's many that have been not known but maybe they will be tonight and we praise you for that i thank you for my friends who are here tonight uh, that uh, have driven a, a long way to come and to support uh, us and to hear your word 
And I just praise you for them. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do. And we promise, we promise that we will give you the glory. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Would you stand and worship with us on the song? How many are awake and feeling good on a Sunday night? You got your nap? Amen. Came in and uh, let's, let's, how many believe God is good tonight? Amen. All the time. Sing us with us. God is good all the time. Put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God, you're good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. I believe that. And God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of God will guide you, and he will keep you safe and sound. You see, he's promised he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. How many have found his word is true? God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through your darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Now we were sinners. We were all unworthy. But still for us he chose to die. And then he filled us with that sweet Holy Spirit. Now we can boldly testify. For that your love is it's everlasting and i found his mercies now they will never end god is good thank you lord all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine god is good all the time through your darkest night his light will shine god is good god is good all the time and though I may not understand, Lord, these plans you made for me, still my life is in your hands. And it's through these eyes of faith now I have learned to see. God is good, and all the time, He put a song of praise in His heart.
expecting no less tonight mm -hmm. just to see God do something special. At any time during this service, I know Pastor Brad would say this, I know Pastor Jack here tonight, and that's what the singing group, what our ministry is all about. It's not about us. It's all about him tonight. And if any need, uh, any time during this service, from the singing through the preaching, this altar is open. If you've got a testimony, if you've got something for the Lord tonight, we just came to meet with him. Wouldn't it be something if we didn't just come in and say we're just going to give them another hour? But we'd say, God, do something that's going to have eternal benefit that we could leave this place saying, man, not what a church, not what a pastor, what not, not what singers, but man, what a God. Amen? And so you just kick back, and I'm, I'm looking forward to all the Lord has tonight. Go ahead, Whit. And we're going to try to keep y'all awake here for a minute. Over to the promised land And I bid this world goodbye I will say farewell to my troubles and trials As I leave them far behind I will join in a song with the angel band Singing praises to the King When I cross over to the promised land And live for eternity When I walk through the pearly gates And I hear him say well done Welcome home, there's a mansion waiting you In a crown of life you won Come on in walls of Jasper and I've heard about the streets of gold. Now I can't wait till I enter the gate and view the half that's never been told. Now I'll join with the saint and millions all around God's throne will stand. Be lifting up the bloodstained banner when I cross through the promised land. When I walk through the pearly gates and I hear him say well done, welcome home. There's a mansion waiting you in a crown of
tonight coming in and having a revival, lifting up a hand, Amen. getting excited about what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. Amen. But I'm thankful I'm saved tonight. song that we was not planning on doing and we came in tonight. We're going to get out of the way unless the Lord moves different. I'm excited about the preaching tonight. In case you weren't here this morning, we're awfully excited. It's just been a wonderful uh, time here in the Lord. We get to be in service today with our pastor and uh, we're from, uh, we live in Belleville. Our church is in Mansfield, Walker Lake Baptist Church. And what a blessing to, uh, to get to just spend time. Tomorrow night we are not singing. I'm excited about the singers that will be here. What's the name of the group singing tomorrow night? Faithful servants, and I am so excited about it. We're not singing, and I'm still going to be here because I'm excited to hear them, and I'm excited to hear my pastor preach. And so uh, tomorrow night, I don't know, the eclipse is going to be over, and uh, don't I, I, everything's going to be clear, I promise you. You just make the biggest thing you can do is say, I'm going to be there, invite somebody to come out and be a part. You know what? I found is we spend a lot of time talking to people about things. Just say, you know what? You ain't going to believe it. Just come. Because it's amazing what God's doing. And people will show up because they want to see what's going on. And so invite somebody to come out. But we're going to get out of the way. And uh, a lot of hurt, a lot of things going on right now in life. A lot of people are struggling. But I want you to listen that there's one name tonight. It's not Buddha. Amen. It's not Allah. It's not any religion. It's this man and his name is Jesus. And there's power in that name. Listen to this song. Sing it with me.
if you enjoyed that tonight, say amen. amen. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Sure did enjoy all that good singing. Good to have some extra folks with us tonight. And uh, we sure do love you. And uh, I'm still rejoicing over the one that God saved this morning. And you know, if heaven gets excited over someone getting saved, I do believe we have liberty to get excited over someone getting saved. And I don't know about you, I'm still excited over the day I got saved. I'm still excited over this thing. It hadn't gotten old on me. And uh, I've, I've seen too many Christians in this hour that say they're going to heaven. They say they met the God of salvation. They said they'll never go to hell. They said it's wonderful, but here's how they do it. And I, I'm just thinking, <laughs> you don't even look happy over all that stuff. So. Bless the Lord. I'm excited I'm not going to hell tonight. Bless the Lord God above. I'm going to be tonight in Acts chapter number 16 is where my heart is tonight. Acts chapter number 16. Good to have uh, some folks from Walker Lake Baptist Church here with us tonight. Some of our own folks, familiar faces and whom we love. We've met some other ones. Got one here from Victory Baptist Church. The grandson of a few in here tonight, I was bragging on, and it's good to have him with us. And it's just good to be a part of the family of God tonight. Amen. I sure am glad for that. Amen and amen. I hope you ate some fried chicken for lunch. If you didn't, I, I feel bad for you. Praise the Lord. If you can't get it tonight on the way home, people think I'm crazy. I talk about fried chicken about every Sunday. I'm trying to pay them chickens back for what they did to Peter over there. <laughs> Crowing at my brother. I'll show you what needs to eat up all you jokers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> trying to get revenge. I'm going to get to heaven and tell Peter, I took care of all I could, brother. We'll have to <laughs> leave the rest to them. <laughs> In a familiar passage tonight, don't let the familiarity of this text uh, throw you off. And see what the Lord would have for our hearts tonight. Acts 16, begin reading in verse number 19. You there, say amen. amen. Say amen because it feels good to say amen. amen. Tell our folks all the time, them are heaven words. You never said that when you was lost. Well, bartender, give me a beer. Amen. <laughs> you know you ain't never said that. Well, thank God Jesus got down on the inside one day and amen. That, I tell you, I remember the first time I said it, it felt good. I wanted to say it again. And then hallelujah, what another heaven word. Them, are, them words are okay in church. They're not cuss words. You ought to try saying them every once in a while. They'll bless your heart and the preacher. Amen. Acts 16, verse number 19. Again, it's good to be here with you folks tonight. The Bible says, and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such in charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners, sir, I just want, if a couple of old boys can praise God from the inner chambers of a wicked prison in stocks and bonds, I just wonder if it'd be possible tonight if sitting on a nice warm building in a church pew with all your loved ones around, I just wonder if it'd be possible for us to find something to praise God for tonight. Bless the Lord. He's worthy, is he not? Hallelujah. Verse 26, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and 
seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, sprang in and came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Ask the greatest question that has ever been asked. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all of his straightway. And when he had brought them into the house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. As I read this text, I'm aware of where Paul is coming from, from verse 1 down to verse number 16. And there was a great journey involved for Paul getting to this one man and his family. Thank God that Paul made the journey. But I want to preach to your hearts tonight on this thought. The things that God will allow someone else to go through in order that he can get through to you. Let me say that one more time tonight. The things that God will allow someone else to go through in order that he might get through to you. Got to think, and I don't know how much time we ever spend pondering What all God allowed the man or the woman to go through that led you to the Lord? What journey that he allowed them to take as they ended up in your presence on that day, shared the gospel with you, and you got born again? I guarantee you there was a journey involved. I thought about and considered uh, what those first disciples went through so that God could get through to another generation. Have you considered all that those men went through in order that you and I can have a Bible in our hand tonight and that that word can get through to you and me? And if that be the case tonight, then I'm wondering if what you're going through right now, think about this. You see, at times we... Our troubles are so overwhelming and our valleys get so low that we forget that God is still the God of the valley and He's the God on the mountain. And if God has got you in a valley tonight, I I promise you He's got a purpose for that valley. You you see, uh, He wants to get through to you tonight. Can I say I've went through a big journey to get here? I'm glad this morning for the man that got saved. Well, preacher, I wonder why God used you to do it. I don't know the answer to that. I just know that's the way it worked out. This is not about me. I certainly know that. But the Lord's doing a work in your life even when it seems dark and hard. You understand tonight that God handles our lives, but you hear me, He never mishandles our lives. you got to get that in your soul. If you're not careful, the devil would have you to believe that what you're going through tonight, that God, it, it just slipped through the cracks, or somehow or another God's not aware of it. But hear me, child of God, The Lord's aware of everything that's in your life. It could not have got there unless he allowed it to be. We're sitting in his hands tonight. Everything that God permits uh, Brother Paul to go through is directly connected to using these circumstances to get through to somebody else. Oh, bear with me. Buckle up. We're going somewhere. Philippians chapter number 1 and verse number 12, Paul tells us himself, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. 
And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Talking about the things that God will allow someone else to go through in order that he might get through to you. Let, let's take a look at a couple of, of thoughts regarding this tonight. I want you to first realize if Paul is going to get to this man and his family, and that's the goal of it all. Now, they're not aware of this at first. They're just living their lives. They're obeying God. They're seeing things happen. But all of a sudden, it seems that God begins to point them in a different direction. And that direction is leading them right to this man's front door. But if Paul is going to reach this man, this man's not on Paul's mind. He doesn't even know this jailer. But thank God the Lord does. And it is God who is directed. Let's notice this tonight. I'm about half excited. I'm going to run. Praise the Lord. I notice first of all, if he is going to reach this man, then a, there must be a shifting involved in Paul and Silas' lives. Now, I'm amazed at how obvious the hand of God is at work here in the lives of his two men. As he directs their paths, like I've said, to this jailer. When we begin this chapter, Paul and uh, his companions are, are seeing many converted. Souls are being saved. Churches are growing. Uh, they're being established. You can notice it there in verse number 4 and 5. Uh, the Bible says that as they went through the cities, they delivered them decrees for to keep that they ordained of the apostles and elders and were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. He's having the time of his life. He's seeing revival. He's not got no bodily injuries from what he's doing. But I notice in verse number 6, notice it if you will. The Bible said now when they had gone throughout Phygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. You think about that. And, uh, and uh, then verse number 7, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go to Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. Hmm. Two places I find Paul and Silas is desiring to go into. But the Holy Ghost will not allow them to go. Preacher, I thought everybody needs to hear the God. They do. But I'm here to tell you God's got a certain word and a certain work for his two men. We're not to reach everybody. You and I can't. But thank God the Lord knows who can. And he's directing, he's shifting these men's life. He's directing their paths, taking them from their ministry with the churches. And then he prevents them from Asia and Bithynia. And then he turns them, he shifts them toward this man and his family. I just wonder tonight... Hallelujah. If you could stand that man up here on this uh, uh, platform tonight with his children and his wife and say to them, Hey, brother jailer, uh, how do you feel about Paul coming to your family, leaving the work that he was doing, uh, being pushed out of Bithynia to come to your home? I just wonder, do you regret him showing up that day? Oh, I guarantee you the obvious answer is no. This man is very thankful that God has shifted these men's lives and has forced them toward his home. Can I say to you that the one who showed up on your front porch, maybe it was a door knocker, maybe it was a Sunday school teacher, maybe it was just a faithful man of God in the pulpit preaching from week to week, but I guarantee you this much, there was a God in heaven who was directing and shifting all of that. <laughs> Listen to me, Moses was on the backside of the desert feeding sheep. Life seemed to be pretty good. I mean, 
you know, what's to bother you about a bunch of dirty sheep? But all of a sudden, God shows up in the midst of a burning bush. This man's 80 years old. He's probably got knee, uh, trick knee and, uh, and who knows at this time. But God shows up right in the midst of his work and says, I need you to go down there to where Pharaoh is and tell him to let my people go. You see, God is looking for a man tonight, a woman tonight, to obey him in his call on their lives. And Moses was willing to be shifted. If you're not willing to be shifted tonight, you may not ever be used of God. Because it's typical of the Lord to turn your direction in 180 most of the time and go towards something that he wants for your life and not just you. <laughs> I think about Elijah, Elisha over there plowing in his field with those uh, uh, bunch of oxen he had. And he was having a good time. <laughs> plowing up his field. And all of a sudden... Here come the prophet of God, Elijah, and cast his mantle upon Elijah. Said, I need you. You're going to be the next prophet of Israel. Well, I say to everyone that was touched by Elijah, and there was 28 miracles recorded that God used this man to do. I just reckon, preacher, I wonder if any of them would regret the day that Elisha decided I'm going with God. I'd have to say to you, the answer is probably no. I wonder, preacher, those disciples that were fishing out there, whoo, glory to God, don't get excited, but they're having a pretty good time out there fishing. Peter even fishes naked from time, which I never got that. I ain't never been fishing naked. Let's just put that out there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> but I can tell you this. Their life was doing pretty good. No big troubles. But one day Jesus showed up and said, follow me. And I guarantee you today in the year 2024, their word is still changing lives in this hour. Why? Because they were willing to be shifted. They were willing to move in the direction that God wanted their lives to go in. You say, preacher, I really would love God to use me. You better get ready. <laughs> Before you say that, you better understand this. God's in the shifting business. And when he shows up, he does some shifting. I thought about Jonah, that prophet of God over there where he was living, having a pretty good time. All of a sudden, the word of God shows up and tells him, I want you to go to Nineveh. But what's Jonah do? He understands the shifting that's involved. He takes off running in the wrong direction. But God's got a fish for him to fix all that. And he swallowed him up and Jonah repented and went to Nineveh. Well, I just wonder, preacher, you think any of those Ninevites tonight that were lost and undone without God or his son that are walking streets of gold, as you and I said here, I just wonder if I could strip one of them out of heaven and stand them before you. Would you say you regret the day that the man of God showed up to where you was and told you you was a sinner in need of saving and you got saved. Do you regret that? I'm sure they'd say no. I'm here to tell you tonight, for every one of us that will ever be used by God, you best understand this tonight. There's going to be a shifting involved. I got saved 21 years ago. God no doubt shifted my life. Brought me out of prison, stuck me in uh, uh, Columbia Road Baptist Church in North Olmstead, Ohio. I got in the Bible Institute in there, never thought I'd be preaching. But God began to work on my heart. And I sat there building a painting company. The Lord began blessing the company. And I began to finally make some money outside of being a drug. I'm going to tell you, God saves you. You're going to do right. You go, even when I was broke, come out of prison with nothing. I knew this much. I'll stay broke if it come to selling dope again. But God began to bless, and I began to be able to take care of my family. 
But one day, he come by my way in that little Bible institute and whispered in my ear and said, I want you to preach. And I said, oh, no, God, you've, uh, you've made a mistake. You got the wrong one tonight. And he said, no, I don't. You're going to be my preacher. But can I say to you, I was on a move. I was ready to build this painting company. I mean, I was finally getting businesses picking up. I could see dollar signs. And God said, no, you meant to be broke, dummy. You, 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 every time you get money, you mess things up. You're going to stay broke. Amen. <laughs> Probably better off for me. But you understand, if I was going to answer the call, I would have to lay my desires down. I'd have to lay down my wants and all that I had dreamed of. I'm going to tell you, there's no dream that you can dream, honey, on this side of heaven that's bigger than the dream God has for your life. Hey, I don't regret a day of it. And he shifted me, and I began to study and preach, and the Lord sent me back into the prisons. I'll never forget, man, God Almighty. My, my birthday came that second trip. I went back to prison, and I remember sitting there with those men in that cell that day, and I said, fellas, I, I'll never be back here. I'll never, ever go back to prison. Now, I know I said that the first time, but I really meant it the second time. <laughs> I knew that was not going to happen no more. And, uh, and would you know that I came home from prison, got everything right, the Lord grabbed my life up, shifted me, and sent me right back to prison. I was preaching in prisons for about eight years throughout the state of Ohio, and I seen gang members and drug dealers and criminals of all kind get born again, become good daddies and husbands and all of that. I seen him take beer bottles and turn them into diapers. I seen him take drug money and turn them into rent money. I mean, God can do a work. And, I, and I'm telling you, none of those men regret that God shifted my life. But then I got, to, I got to thinking that was what I'd do for the rest of my life. God showed up one day and said, now I want you to go be a pastor to my people. Now I knew he had messed up there. I know how, how little sense I got. But I promise you it's been the best four years of my life. Say, what are you trying to say tonight, preacher? I'm taking you on a journey. God's going to let somebody go through something so he can get through to you. And I'm telling you, the life that I have traveled, the journey that I have been on, I'm 46 years old tonight. Someone this morning thought Whitney was my mother. <laughs> Amen. I'm doing good. But I'm 46 years old tonight, and God has allowed me to live two lifetimes already. 25 years of living in wretchedness. And 21 years now living on this side of glory. And I promise you, it has been a journey to get to where I am tonight. But here I am. He's trying to get through to you. But he'll let someone go through some things in order to get through to you. There was a shifting involved. But I want you to notice, secondly, there was a sailing involved. By the way, this ain't about Paul and Silas. This is about this jailer and his family. There was a sailing involved. Look at it in verse number 11. The Bible says, Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. Can I say to you, believe it or not, there was a long journey involved getting Paul and Silas from where they were to where God wanted them. They have come a long way. By the way, not in a plane, not in an F-150, and someone witnessed that they had a Chevy pickup truck, and that's why they walked everywhere. I, I don't know if that's true. I'm just telling you what I heard. But listen, the way was long and the road was hard and God has brought his men a long way to get through to this jailer. 
But I bet this man's glad that Paul didn't say that's too far for me to go. The road's too rocky. But in obedience to God Almighty, he went the distance and thank God that he did. You know, we'll send missionaries all over the world to go get somebody. But you and I have got neighbors that might live 15 feet from us. I just wonder, preacher, should I go knock on their... Yes! 15 steps might get you to your neighbor's door. But I guarantee you, if they get saved, it'll be worth the trip. I just wonder how long the one that led you to the Lord had to travel to get to where you are. Have you thought about that? Well, I'm going to tell you, I've never become so thankful for the one that led me to the Lord dealing with this passage. You do understand, when I got saved, I, I've got two Baptist preaching uncles that would drop by my house every once in a while to remind me that I'm on my way to hell. And thank God for them. But I never listened to them. I didn't, I didn't care a word they say, Pastor. I was just a, a hard head, you know, heathen. And, uh, but, but, you know, all the preaching that they did to me, brother, none of it did anything for me. None of it. Well, I could just walk right away from it, and it wouldn't bother me a bit, cold-hearted as can be. But do you understand, when I got saved, I'm talking about there was a journey involved for the one to get through to you. That Mexican that met me in that cell that day, I told you about it this morning. Do you know, I don't know how many miles that man had to travel to get to me. But he was from a village in Mexico, hallelujah. I don't know how many thousands of miles that God let that one man journey to get to where I was. But I guarantee you that he was the one that God used. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't get excited, but can I tell you about the Son of God who left his throne in glory? And I don't know how long it is between here and heaven. Whoo, glory. I guarantee you it's farther than you can walk, honey. But the Son of God led by example when he left that glorious place and came all the way down here because he wanted to get through to you. Amen. And tell you, if it was me, I'd have stayed laid back on that golden throne with my feet up. Had I known I was going to come here and, and, and have happen to me what happened to the Son of God, I would have stayed home. But can I say to you tonight, and how many witnesses do I got, I sure am glad he made the journey. You've made any journeys for anybody here as of late? Have you taken a walk across the street and told your neighbor there's a God that loves them? Oh, listen to me. There's not only a shifting involved, there's a sailing involved. Do you know when my little son, my youngest son, Jack Jack, got saved? He had been in preaching since he was born. And, and do you know who led this, man, this boy to the Lord at about six, seven years old? It was a missionary from Haiti. I'm telling you, I don't know how long that journey was to get to the United States over there in North Olmstead, but it was a long one. But I sure am glad he made the trip. I don't even know what that man said that night. I couldn't understand a word he said. He spoke different than I did. But I can tell you this, that six-year-old boy, God got through to his heart and he's saved today because of the journey that a man made all the way from Haiti to come here that God would use him to get through to a six-year-old boy Amen. who was sitting on, hallelujah to God. We going some, hold tight, honey. There's a shifting involved if God's going to use you to get through to someone. There's a sailing involved, a journey involved if someone's going to, if God's going to use you to get through to somebody else. But I notice thirdly, there's a suffering involved. In verse number 22, if you will look at it. The Bible said, and the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid one or two stripes on them. No, the Bible used the word many stripes upon them. They cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who having received such a charge, 
thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. You see, these men, these men are now in a place where their very lives are at risk. What a change of scenery from verse 1 to now. They have been stripped of their clothing, beaten with many stripes. Then on top of that, their freedom is taken from them. As they've been uh, thrown into the inner part of the prison, that's called the hole. You don't want to go there, praise God. But these men are there for doing right. The only time I was ever in the hole is for doing wrong. These men are there for doing right. And then had their feet fastened in the stocks. What are you saying, preacher? Well, the Lord has allowed his men now to go through some great suffering to reach this man. Just wonder, you, you reckon you'd be willing to go through some things? There's a brother in here tonight. His wife passed away just a, not very long ago. Many struggles along life's journey. But the last four, five, six months of her life, I cannot tell you, this woman never once got bitter at God. And it was a tough, tough journey. She never once cursed God's name. I don't know in, in my presence, she never asked the word why even. Nothing wrong with why. Jesus even asked that. But this woman's heart was bent on this. She told God, I'm willing to go through anything that I need to go through that my sons would come back into the will of God and be saved and serve him. She was willing to go through the most horrific type of suffering in order for that to happen and can I tell you tonight child of God what you're suffering right now may not have nothing to do with you it may have everything to do with the ones that God's going to use your suffering to get through to a multitude of other people he's allowed his men to suffer and now listen, unknown to this jailer, unknown to Paul, and unknown to Silas, the very one who has just locked them up in prison is the very one they've been sent to. <laughs> and hear me, what they do next will determine the outcome eternally for this man and his family. You understand if Paul and Silas gets mad at God and gets bitter and says, this ain't fair, this is too hard, this ain't what I prayed for, nobody would blame them. I couldn't blame them. You was just serving God, having a good old time, and the Lord showed up and sent you, and now you are suffering as a result for somebody else. If they was, if they was willing to say, I'm done, nobody could blame them. Uh, but you've got to understand, there's been others suffer for you and me. Jesus, you might not know this, but he suffered a great deal for you and me. Had he rejected the suffering, you and I tonight are hopeless. Had he rejected Calvary, you and I tonight would be in hell. But thank God he was willing to endure the suffering to get through to somebody else. Joseph had to suffer to save an entire world. Uh, John the Baptist had to suffer to prepare the way of the Lord. The disciples had to suffer to turn the world upside down. What in the world would make you and I think tonight, child of God, that we're not going to have to do some suffering along life's journey? But if God's going to use you tonight, you're probably going to have to suffer some. Then I want you to notice not only this suffering that's involved, there was a staying that's involved. Verse number 28, you hold tight. We get into the good part and we fix fixing to shout it out and get some help and go home and eat some frosted flakes and jump into bed. <laughs> There's staying involved. Look at verse 28. The Bible said, but, uh, and the keeper in verse 27 of the prison awakened out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. 
There's some staying involved, some determination involved. They hung around when they should have gotten out of there. They've already been beaten. Any good inmate would have ran. I certainly would have ran. You pop the lock on me, honey, and open the doors and everyone's missing. I'm hitting the door. I'm out of there. But not Paul and Silas. I wonder why they hung around, preacher, because I tell you it's better to be in prison with Jesus than to be free without him. I dealt with a, a young man in prison uh, eight or nine years ago. I got there and he said, Preacher, I've got a double life sentence. I said, is that right? He said, yeah. He told me about being in a shootout with a man and he killed the other one and, and uh, he got life in prison as a result. He said, but since I got here, I got another life sentence. And I said, my, I started backing up from this fellow. I figured he done stabbed one or two. He said, uh, since I've been here, he said, I've got an eternal life sentence. And he said, I know that I would have never gotten the second one had it not been for the first one. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. There's something big about this thing of hanging around. Aren't you glad your pastor's here tonight? Yeah. Pastor, I want you to understand something, brother. I've got very big respect for you. Yeah. I want you to know that. You have encouraged me. I don't even know you, but I, you've encouraged me by you sti sticking with this meeting and coming and being a part of it. He's got every reason tonight to be at home. I don't know where I'd be. I don't have nothing to compare that to, but I want you to know thank you for hanging around. You've got a good man of God in your presence tonight. You ought to be everything you can be to him in this moment. Hallelujah to God. He hung around. Aren't you glad for the men of God that though they went through trying times and though they went through some suffering times and the journey was long and the way was rough, thank God when they had every reason to cut and run, honey, they hung around and thank God they did because God used them to get through to you tonight. Whew, I'm so glad they didn't run when the doors were swinging. Now I want you to see this. I want you to see this in verse number 25. As a result, here they are. They, they have had to shift some things. They've had some selling to do. They've had some suffering to do. And I'm going to tell you, all of it is so that God can use them to get through to this one man and his family. That's special to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But if God let someone go through all that for me, I say bless the Lord tonight. Thank God for it. But I want you to see in verse 25, there's a singing involved. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And sang praises unto God and the prisoners. Heard. I ain't got much problem with them praying. Why well, I'd be praying if I was in that situation. Oh God, get me out of this place. And Lord, you know I've served you all these years. What am I doing in prison? I, I don't, I'm not shocked about their praying, but I, I'm real shocked about the singing. Their backs are beat wide open. They're about half naked. Their clothes are ripped off. Their feet are in stocks. It's midnight. They're in prison. It's dark. And they say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now, something like that, was blind, but now I see. You know, ain't nothing more encouraging than a brother or sister going through a hardship and they've still got a song in their heart. You know, I, I thought about this. We're almost done. You just hold tight. I never found one place where Paul and Silas complained about all this. I don't find no place where they curse God and said, when I get out of here, I'm quitting. But I do see them singing a glorious song in the midst of all of this. It wasn't so much that they prayed. It wasn't so much that they sang. But it's where they're singing. I say to you tonight, Pastor, keep on singing, brother. 
Don't let this battle, I love a song that Mike Blanton evidence sang. It says, don't let the battle steal your praise. God has been so good to you. You can still shout hallelujah no matter what you're going through. I know the battle's raging, but victory's on its way. Lift your hands and give him glory. Don't let this battle steal your praise. Someone needs to hear it. God there needs to know that we trust in God in the bad times no different than the good times. There's a singing involved. Two more. Look at this. Verse 26. There's a shaking involved. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled. This great singing caused a great shaking. And it woke this man up from his sleeping state. He now realizes the depths of his troubles. Here is the moment that all of this has brought together for. This one moment they have traveled, they have been through everything for this one moment. If they do something wrong here, they mess the whole thing up. You understand that tonight? Notice in verse number 28. There was a saving involved. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas, brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Thank God they knew what to say. Whew, what if they'd have said, I don't know, brother. I, we're just here. We, we're just here, but we don't know how to get saved. Child of God, you ought to be able to tell somebody how to be saved. I'm shocked in this hour how many Christians have never led no one the Lord. And if somebody asked them how to be saved, they wouldn't know how to tell them anyway. All of their obedience, listen to me, all of their obedience up to this point has been for this one moment and it is going to be glorious in this man's life. He tells them how to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. His whole family gets saved. He gets saved. His children get saved. His wife gets saved. They get baptized. They probably joined a good church over there at Philippi. How did it happen? I'm going to tell you, he had to let two people go through a great deal of mayhem in order to get in the presence of this one jailer. Saying to you tonight, here I am. Brother Trey, Miss Whitney, would you come back and sing us out of here tonight? Here I am. I'm going to tell you, it's taken me a journey to get to where you are. But I'm going to tell you, it was worth it all just for this morning. But I can guarantee you this, there's someone else in this room tonight that needs to be saved. That's what this is all about. You see, here in just a little while, it's going to be too late. And do you know the very first two seconds that you're in hell, the very first thing you're going to want is mercy. But there ain't going to be none. The very first thing you'll cry out for is grace. But there ain't going to be none. They say that all atheists are in hell. Can I tell you, there ain't one atheist in hell because hell's made a believer out of every one. God's allowed me to go through a journey to get here for you tonight. And I pray if it's you, you know who you are, that tonight would be the night of salvation in your life. Preacher, I want you to know this. I love you, brother. And you hang in there. God's going to use this circumstance in your life I don't know how many miracles, how many lives will be changed out of this, but I do know this. There will be. God's going to use it for the glory of God. You know, it's still in the Bible for God, for we know that he worketh all things for good to them that love God, that are called according to his purpose. Let's all stand tonight. You need to come. You need to come. Why don't you come? need to come and tell God thank you for the one that led you to the Lord. 
They may be here tonight. You might want to come and say thank you to them. What an honor to Why don't you step out and come tonight, friend? Sister, brother. Soldier of the cross. Yes. An army that has never turned back. And never suffered loss. Don't wait, friend. Step out. Come tonight. Our weapons, they're not cardinal. Our stronghold you can't see. This army becomes mighty. By time spent on our knees. Yes, bless the Lord tonight. I'm not ashamed for you to see yes. this soldier on his knees. Yes. You might even see a tear. Or hear a humble plea. Amen. Some may call it weakness. Some may question my strength. But you must see this power's not of me. For I prepare for battle on my knees. Watch mothers pray for their children, so lost and full of sin. And I have seen those same prayers answered as the Spirit brought them in. And I have watched old Satan like a dark cloud hanging o'er. But when I pled the blood of Jesus, those clouds were there. never see that passage of scripture again without thinking about the way you shared what God put on your heart tonight I can't help but think the same thing that uh, in a crowd this size there's somebody that doesn't know that they know that they're going to be with the Lord when he calls them and you know what we have an opportunity right now and we're not guaranteed an opportunity tomorrow so if you leave tonight you have something on your heart I hope that you will grab me or Pastor Jack or Trey and Whitney and share that need and let us show you how you can receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and take care of the greatest decision you will ever make Amen. in this life. Amen. Have you been blessed to be here tonight? Amen. I have been. Amen. You'll have an opportunity to show that when you leave here. Um, there'll be an offering plate in the back. One of the, one of the trustees, one of the uh, ushers will have an a offering plate back there. And you can share with Pastor Jack, Trey and Whitney tonight. Uh, just your appreciation in a monetary way. Is Kelsey? Kelsey's not here. All right. Is your stuff back there that you can buy? Okay. 
Hey, you could also support Trey and Whitney by, uh, by purchasing some of their, their uh, stuff. Uh, they got t-shirts, yes. Uh, you got uh, DVDs and USBs and CDs and yes, yes. All the good alphabet, amen. <clears throat> so you can, uh, you can see them as they go out. Just let them know that you're glad you were here tonight. All right. Pastor Gary and uh, Brother Doug, I got it right? Doug, all right. You got a twin brother, and I get them mixed up sometimes, okay? <laughs> but Brother Doug is, and them are going to be here tomorrow night. There's two members, right, of uh, the faithful servants, and you're going to be blessed by them. And so uh, come back tomorrow night and hear them, and uh, we'll have a great time together. Get another word. Tomorrow night is, uh, is yet another great word from God's word. I think every word ought to be a great word from God's Amen. word. Amen? Amen. So, thank you so much for being here. Anybody got anything to share? Testimony? Just a praise? All right. It's been a good day. someone else. Thank you for the picture tonight of Paul and Silas. Father, may that be replicated in our life in the days to come. Father, may you go with us now. Keep us safe as we drive home. May, uh, Lord, you return and be in this place with us as the church gathers together tomorrow night. In Christ's name I pray.